What is up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Cap back again with another video and this time it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be playing against one of my good friends, his name is Billy Manzo. We met up through Edge Car Breaks on Instagram, he's a really great guy. I mean he posts a bunch of cards and not only that but he also sells cards. So if you want to go to his Instagram page, his Instagram page is going to be down below in the description. We're going to be playing a 5 inning game, our best squads going against each other. We're going to be playing 5 innings because of course you know the editing on stuff but yeah we're gonna play a five inning game hopefully uh hopefully i come out on top but it should be a good game so and if you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up comment down below who else i should play and of course subscribe to the channel it is very much appreciated so without further ado let's get into the game all right we're here with my friend billy he's got bruised our gratter on the hill what is up billy how you doing my dude what's up Julio? not much man i'm just ready to whoop your behind are you expecting that today uh, not even close. Don't think there's a chance. Uh, I hope you're ready to be buried at the end of this one. So, I gotta ask you right now, who is your favorite team and why? So, I gotta go with the New York Yankees. You know, I was born and raised in the Bronx. I've lived in New York my entire life. And, uh, I try and get out to about 20 to 30 Yankee games a year. So, I, I, I gotta go with the Yankees. Okay, okay. So... Okay, so since you are from the East Coast, you're from the New York area, it pretty much makes sense. That's good. All right, so here we are. Of course, I'm leading off here. You are the home team. We elected that you would be the home team. So what are you predicting for this game, Billy? Uh, I'm thinking that I'll get on the board first, uh, first here, and I will probably end the game on top of the board as well. Okay, okay, so you're predicting a victory for yourself, but I, I don't see that happening. I see you, you're you starting to get a little bit wild with Bruzdar. Why did you pick Bruzdar Gratterall? Uh I know he's a little bit tougher to hit. He's got the outlier ability, so his fastball and his sinker come in pretty hard. And if you can mix his uh, off speed in, he is definitely tough to hit. You are not wrong about that. Bruzdar is definitely one of the future aces of the Dodgers rotation. And, uh... Are you excited for the opening day to start? Because I really am. I know the Angels are definitely going to win the World Series, so that's obviously no surprise right there. What are your predictions for this season? So, honestly, uh, I'm really excited for the season as well. I'm going to agree with you there. I'd love to see the Angels win a World Series. Because yeah. as you know, uh, as you said in the intro, I am big in the uh, sports card industry. As Big as Meat Pete one, goes deep to left field in New York. Kiss it goodbye, gone. You hanging, we bang. I'm sorry I had to interrupt you, but when you leave a hanging slider, the big me, Pete, you cannot ignore that. And here is the glitch in the game. Papa Cap. All right, continue with what you were saying. So, as you know, I'm big in the, uh, the sports card industry, the trading cards, and uh, I think the Angels winning a World Series eventually could absolutely drive the prices of Mike Trout cards up through the roof, which would be great for the hobby. It would be great. I mean, I saw, I know a bunch of PSA 10 Mike Trouts are already going in the triple digits. I think even four digits. I might be wrong on that, but Mike Trout rookie cards are definitely hard to come by. And PSA 10's band, oh man, they're just flying off the shelves and just soaring in prices. Yeah, no, I gotta agree with you there, man. Uh, PSA 10 Trouts have almost tripled in value over just the past year. Yeah, it's absolutely insane, especially since not many people actually expected Mike Trout to be the greatest player of this generation. One and one. So, I gotta ask you. What is it about being a Yankees fan that, like, you guys cannot win a World Series? Because they always make the playoffs, or at least majority of the time. I mean, hey, I can't, I can't blame you there. You guys got the team. The Angels, they try, but, you know, the pitching is obviously the problem. What is it with you guys not making the World Series this past decade? You know, honestly, it's, uh, you know, when you play in a league where teams are uh, consistently cheating... Uh, mm. And knowing exactly what's coming, you know, it's, it's hard to get places. No, you're not wrong there. I mean, especially with the Houston Astros in 2017 and, of course, the Boston Red Sox in 2018. Many are saying that the Dodgers should get the World Series trophies. And I, I honestly just find that very, very ridiculous. I mean, think about it. If the Dodgers really think they deserve the trophy, don't you think the other team should have a chance too? They also face the Dodgers. Like the Angels in the Freeway Series. 
Or, I'm sorry. No, the Houston Astros, actually. My bad. Astros faced the Angels. They also faced Oakland. A bunch of teams got screwed, and the Dodgers think they should deserve the title. Everybody should at least get a fair chance. Am I not wrong? No, you're definitely right. You know, you can't undo the record books. Uh, it's, it's pretty much it's pretty much hard to do. Um, you know, do do the Dodgers deserve more credit uh, for going? You know, they, they took the Astros to a seven-game series. Let's not forget that. Exactly. That is true. Um, and especially when the Astros knew exactly what was coming. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Uh, so you can't fault the Dodgers there. They played a heartfelt series. Um but, it, you know, it sucks. It's it's cheating, and, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in cheater, cheaters never win, but you can't unwrite the history books. Exactly. And the fact that if we were to take up the Astros and the Red Sox out of history books, it's just going to leave a huge stain in baseball forever. And in a way, I'm actually going to have to agree with Rob Manfred there, even though I really, I really don't like his decisions. I have to agree with him on that one. Yeah, no, he, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he and I, I think, have the same opinions. You know, you, you can't undo the history books. It's, it's one thing you just can't do. It is unfortunate. So you said earlier that you were going to be scoring the first run of the game, and as we saw earlier, Big Me Pete decided to take you deep. <laughs> well, you can't hang the man in slider. Exactly, exactly. We're, we're, I mean. We're talking about a guy who now holds the record for the most home runs in a rookie season, surpassing your own New York Yankee, Aaron Judge. Thoughts on Big Me Pete on his rookie year and his future? Uh, I mean, how could you not like Pete Alonso? You know, a guy wins a home run derby his rookie year, breaks a home run record. Um, you know, you saw the love Aaron Judge got for doing that, and, but, you know, why shouldn't Pete Alonso get the same? Exactly, exactly. Um, so speaking of Pete Alonso and, of course, the New York Mets, they have a, uh, an ace in Jacob deGrom. But since uh, I don't think he has a chance to win Cy Young, but he does d- definitely compete, I actually want to know, what are your predictions for Cy Young and MVPs this season? Well, you know, with such a, uh, a short season, you know, all it takes is one guy to go on a, a quick little hot streak. You know, if a pitcher throws up, you know, a few wins here uh, in a row, it's, you know, it, you could see somebody who you would never expect to win an award win one this year. It's it's really unpredictable. That's a, that's a pretty tough question to answer because we've never seen anything like this. The count is one and two. Give me a second. I just remember what the fuck I had to do. What was it? So I'm playing. I-, I was playing through my OBS, and there's like a like maybe a quarter of a second delay, and I just remembered. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just remember I had to switch my input back. So uh, all right, we're good. Yeah, you're not wrong there. It is a short season. Uh, I'm gonna tell you my predictions, and I hope I am right on at least one of these. So my prediction is for AL and NL Cy Young. I got to go with my guy from the AL Central. I got to go with Lucas Giolito. He was on an absolute tear on the second half of the season. And that equally translates to the next guy who I think is going to win NL Cy Young. And that is going to be Jack Flaherty. As you know, man, that second half, man, at sub-1 ERA, that's almost hard to replicate. We're talking about Hall of Fame numbers like Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson, those greats. That's my prediction for Cy Young Awards. Do you have anybody in mind, or do you at least disagree with my picks? Hey, listen, those are those are two great picks. You know, those are two guys who obviously have never won those awards before, but uh, you know, they they got themselves a decent shot. Um, I, I definitely agree with uh, Jack Flaherty. I think this could be a really good year for him. He obviously uh, had great uh, numbers in the second half, as you mentioned last year. And uh, if he could pick it up right where he started off, then uh, who knows? Who knows? It, it's absolutely insane. And now for this year, what's crazy is that for the MVP race, it could honestly go to a pitcher. Pitchers are expected to pitch at least 10 games this year, starting pitchers. And even relief pitchers, they could pitch at least, what, 40 games this entire season? and they could come away with 35 saves, they could easily win MVP, and it's almost anybody's game. Hey, you know, that's very possible. Um, 
you know, I'm a firm believer in, you know, the, I, I'm not a firm believer in, uh, it, it's hard to say. Pitchers have their own award. You know, the Cy Young, I think they should keep it that way. Um, I know some pitchers had phenomenal seasons in which they did win the uh, MVP as well, but I think I think a hitter deserves the MVP, uh, and the pitchers should just stay with their Cy Young award, but that, that's just me. I do agree with you there. To an extent, some pitchers... I mean, they have, they do have their own award, but an MVP award does go to at least everybody in the league. So, technically, I feel like everybody has a fair shot. But I do understand where you're coming from. Cy Young award should go to, of course, pitchers. MVP should go to hitters. You're not wrong there. But in order to qualify, like, it's very rare for pitchers to actually win MVP. I mean, the last, last guy to probably do it was, I believe, Kershaw. And obviously, he had to put up miraculous numbers to win that, and he rightfully so deserved it. Yeah, as I make a uh, huge blunder there on the base paddle with, uh, with David Ortiz, who, if he doesn't hit a home run, is uh, pretty tough to move around those bases. And, well, then again, too, you hit it to the one guy who's the go in baseball, and that's pop a cap. I mean, I mean, dude, that was your own death sentence, you know? Yeah, well, considering we're playing a five-inning game, I think it's time for Bruzdar to take a seat for somebody on the bench. You're not wrong, man. With a five-inning game, you know, you only got a certain amount of outs. You got 15 outs to work with, and you're going to bring in player of the most Cody Ballinger. And is this the prestige card? It is not. Okay, so it's, I feel a little bit safer then. Here we go. Ooh, okay, that's going to be blistered right. You, you got a two-hour rally going on, though. Yeah, you know, we could have been looking at a tie game here, but David Ortiz did a David Ortiz thing and decided to uh, walk around the bases. All right, that was, that was a very smart move, which actually gets me thinking. I should probably get something getting started in the bullpen, as that's exactly what I'm going to do. You got three consecutive switch hitters to start off this game. I probably should have paid a little bit more attention to your lineup. But with two outs, man, I'm really focused on the hitter more than the runners. Yeah, and this is a card you don't see people using too much very often anymore. Now with 99 Jackie Robinson out, so we'll see if Isal Bruhan can get something done. He let off the game with a single and scored, so let's see if he can get something going again. Yeah, it's true. He is your only run in this game, but unfortunately, I do believe you're going to strike out here as that gets dropped. Man, I, I, it's definitely going to be a good game between us. We both saw each other's lineups. We both know what's un, uh, what's uh, what we're expecting, so it's gonna be a good game. As that you hit it down the line, you might be able to take the lead. But Poppy Cap's reaction is too quick for anybody in the game. But you do <laughs> tie this game. It is now tied at two apiece. Okay, you did say you predicted yourself a victory, but hey, with all we still got three innings left. It's definitely anybody's ball game right here. I mean, I don't know why you would go against yourself when predicting who's going to win the game. I mean, I predicted myself to win, bro. You're the one that uh, said, oh, I'm going to score first. I'm like, well, about that, Chief. You know, Big Me Pete has some other words. <laughs> All right, as we got our 0-2 count, let's see if we can strike you out. And, ooh, very, very good eye. That's called a take. That's called a very good take there, Julio. It is. You are not wrong there. Oh, oh my God! Hey, 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 that's Roy Ozo. That was not my fault one bit. I mean, listen, if you want to put him on for the mix, you know, I got no problem with that. You know what? You know what? I th I think I gotta sit out Roy Ozo. That was a very, very interesting pitch by him. But you know what? That's gonna be it for him tonight. As this is a five inning game, you did say that earlier. Five inning game, so we gotta go to the bullpen. We're gonna bring in Fernando Ronnie. His control is definitely questionable. But hopefully he can at least get out of this inning some way, somehow. Base is loaded, though. Two outs. He's going to try and avoid it. As you hit it down the line, that is going to score two runs right there. Fernando Ronnie gives up a two RBI double. Just like that, you score two runs. Wow, you're definitely making a comeback. But, man, I, I'm really hoping to win as we jam you with that inside slider. Man, tell us about what you were looking for in that inning. Uh, you know, I was just sitting on the fastball. You know, I was a little late on it. Um, I, I abused the left field line, as you could obviously tell. Um, you said pop a cap out there was uh, the guy not to hit it to, and I just wanted to prove you wrong and start, uh, you know, hitting it down that left field line. Hey, man, you definitely hit it well, man. Poppy Cap was, uh, of course, chasing these balls down, and he actually did, like, you know, throw them quickly. 
as you bring in Dallin Batanzas. Now, I believe this is the new Dallin Batanzas that was part of the new event primetime. Am I not wrong? You are correct there, Julio. This is uh, the brand new one. Did you buy this card or did you grind for these event wins? What are you talking about, Julio? You know I already bought the card. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I, I believe it was like 40 no. wins, the only way to get this card, uh, or 60 wins. But yeah, this card is definitely nasty. I mean, there's it's really hard to hit. I mean, does he not have 99 velo and break? Uh -oh. oh, as you low, as you throw a slurve, and that baby is gone. Big fly for Robbie Cano. Don't you know? With the solo Jimmy Jack making it now a one run game. Now the game plan has changed now. As you throw that slurve, man. Hey, this is, I told you this was going to be a close game. And hey, are we not, are people not paying the price of admission for this game? <laughs> Well, this is the one time you get to see some fans in the stands this year, so they're, they're paying for a good game. Yeah, man. Uh, so I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on uh, this whole negotiation for this baseball season? Like, obviously, with the MLBPA and the MLB, the owners, what was your entire thought process going into this, like, expecting, you know, 60 games, 40 games, 120 games? What What did you think of that? Well, Julio, if i got to be honest with you, I, I did not expect a single game of Major League Baseball to be played this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think the negotiations were, you know, a little childish, if anything, on both sides. I think both of them had, uh, you know, both of them had their ideas of how they wanted the season to go. But, you know, I'm glad they eventually came up with the deal because, you know, we, we need baseball in these times, man. We, we really do need it. No, you're absolutely not wrong. The only problem now that we face as fans is that a lot, of, not a lot of players, but some big players are opting out to not play this season. Now, I, at least in my opinion, do not fault the players one bit for not playing this season. May, many for health reasons, many for, of course, personal reasons. But you know what? I do not fault the players one bit. What are your thoughts on the players opting out this season? Uh, you know, it's their right and their choice. You know, they have families, they have people they have to think about. I wouldn't blame it if, if you know, they didn't even play because of it. But, you know, I give props to the guys who are because, uh, uh, you know, people want to watch baseball this year. And, you know, thank God we're going to be able to. Yep, yep. And now a lot of players are actually, some of them don't even know, but some of them have actually been hit with the COVID-19 virus. And I know one of those players recently announced that they got the virus, or at least the reports, is Aroldis Chapman, your fellow Yankee. What are your thoughts on Chapman getting the virus? You know, obviously that hurts the Yankees because that's, that's their guy. They're closer. But um, fortunately for my Yankees, their bullpen is, is pretty tough to beat anyway without him. Uh, but obviously, you know, prayers go out to him and his family. Hope he gets well soon. We'll get to see him play this year. Hopefully. And not, not, and um, Chapman isn't the only Yankee. DJ LeMahieu was also diagnosed with the virus. Man, a lot of players are being hit with the virus. But, you know, uh, we do hope that they have a speedy recovery. And they ho hopefully they get a chance to play this year. But, you know, what? Uh, I would not fault them one bit if the, if the team or the player themselves decides to not make them play this year. Of course, yeah, and it's, you know, it's sad, but, you know, that's how life is now. Um, hopefully these guys are over it soon and everybody's okay and uh, we can get back to playing some baseball with everybody. Hopefully that is the case. Switching topics, we're going to talk about a little bit about you, if we don't mind. So we know you have your own uh, Instagram page of baseball cards. Why don't you tell the people your Instagram page of baseball cards and tell us a little bit how you got into cards. So, uh, for all of you who'd like to see my page and check out, I do uh, group breaks all the time. Uh, you know, I post some of my uh, mail days and newer cards. It's at Simply High End Cards on Instagram. Um, so, if any of you guys want to check it out, obviously go ahead, be free. Please throw a follow if you uh, enjoy what you see on the page. Um, as I bring in a new picture here. Bring in a lefty. Uh, bring in a lefty. Bring in a lefty. Damn. <laughs> Yeah. Go with my guy Tom Hankey here, Blue Jays Team Affinity card. That's right, but, very, uh, very again, nice. Back, back to the uh, 
back to the Instagram, you know, uh, I, I got into cards when I was, you know, about 10 years old. My father passed down his collection to me. Uh, you know, it was there was no huge cards, nothing great, but it was cool to collect all the players when I was younger and see, you know, who did what, the facts about who, all all the statistics and everything. It was it was really cool, and I, I really got into it. And then, eventually, as I got older, I started realizing, you know, that they started making autograph cards and game use memorabilia cards and all stuff like that. And it was really something that I found really cool. How, you know, you don't just have to be at the ballpark to. Uh, one to get a real feel for the game and get a guy's autograph, it's 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 pretty cool to get it out of a pack of cards. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. As I strike out right there, but no, yeah, trust me, baseball cards—they've been a passion of mine since I was younger, man. I remember I would go to Target when I was maybe eight, nine years old. I remember very early, one of the first uh, earliest memories of me actually getting cards. I got like a complete set. I don't remember what year specifically, but it came with like a special like Mickey Mantle pin or something of that kind as you hit Biggio. But yeah, that was actually one one of my first memories of like getting a complete set. I remember my mom getting mad at me. She told me, she not only told me, but to my dad saying, why would you buy him cards? That's a waste of money. You know, he's never going to keep them, this and that, you know, yada, yada. And I'm think I'm starting to think about it. One of those cards, uh, one of those cards in the set. If I might be wrong, but I think it might have a Mike Trout rookie. I might be wrong, but it was uh, I. It definitely upset me how my mom threw away my cards. And uh, now that I'm starting to get back into the hobby, about a good two years ago, it's insane how much value a lot of these cards have, and different types of cards, relics, autos cut autos a bunch of different stuff it's absolutely insane how cards have just you know soared over the years yeah and as you unfortunately uh hit that pop-up right to my capture <laughs> um you know listen if you have trout rookies laying around that's that's some good money man you can prove to your mom right now that it was one of the smartest uh business decision of your father's life if, if you just happen to pull a uh, trout rookie out of one of those boxes but um you know the uh, the card collecting industry, especially within the past year, has has uh, been phenomenal. The uh, card prices are up. Uh, people are just you know, and I hate to say it because obviously it's a it's not a great thing, but the coronavirus has had actually a positive effect on the hobby, just because it is giving uh, people uh, something to do. You know, get back into sports card collecting while they're home. You're not wrong there. I remember I was going to Target. Uh, about a couple, about a month ago, I would say, or two months ago, I went to go get a uh, see if uh, maybe Target had restocked, and lo and behold, the Target that I went to restocked, but they own they didn't have any Bowman blaster boxes. They had Bowman uh, packs, value packs, fat packs. That's all they had, and I thought to myself, well, especially since this is my local Target, I don't think I'm gonna get another chance to actually get cards. So I decided to get everything in stock, and out of one of those packs came out a Bobby Witt Jr. sticker auto number to 150. It was, of course, a blue parallel. And, of course, with him being on the Royals organization, blue on blue does bring some value. So, to my mom, if you're somehow watching this, cards do have value. But, you know what? That's the thing That's about cards, card, man. Yeah. It is a nice card. One of the things, yeah, I love collecting cards, man. But, yeah, uh, this hobby really did... Uh, bring a positive uh to uh to as in value wise you know with the co co coronavirus all that stuff man it's it's absolutely insane how the trend has gone especially with like a product like uh project 2020 you know yeah i i totally agree with you. project 2020 is something that's pretty cool i wasn't a big believer in it when it came out but now looking back at some of the prices some of the earlier parts it's, it's been a definitely a smart investment for a lot of uh, people who got into it yeah, and I might be wrong, but uh, how mu how much are those cards going for? I never I never jumped on the hype train. I I always felt like it was a risk, especially since they weren't you know like actual cards produced by Tops, but more they were produced by Tops, but more by like the artists. I I never really saw its potential. What was it about Tops Project Twenty Twenty that really just soared? As you hit a home run to left field. To make it a 7-3 game. 
Wow, you definitely put this now, game. Now, before, before I tell you my thoughts on the Project 2020s, I have to ask, what, what, what in your mind, what were your thoughts on walking Chipper Jones there? Here's the thing I wanted. The reason why I walked Chipper Jones is because I wanted to force a double play some way, somehow. And if you see that slider that I threw to Mickey Mano, that was a borderline below the zone pitch. And I just don't know how you got under it, you know? Yep. Man, I... Now, anyway, back to, the, back to those Project 2020s. You know, I think uh, with Tops using such great design cards from, you know, previous years... Uh, yeah, you know, I think it just brought a lot of nostalgia back to people, and to see the cards get, you know, almost mutated in a way into something cool was, I think, something the fans, uh, you know, of baseball appreciated and really enjoyed. And there's also a chance of even getting rare parallels and uh, one-on-one cards, which have a, uh, a huge value if you're lucky enough to get one. Yeah, I, b- I believe those are the one-of-ones, one and I believe there are also artist proofs. And those are random artist proofs are, are the number to 25, I believe. Those you do have to get through the Topps website, but the one of one you ha- you have to get lucky. You honestly have to get lucky okay. in Number getting one. it because those are, I believe, randomly inserted. The one of one, right? Correct. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. As we head to the top of the fifth, I have to find a way to make a comeback. You got a seven three lead on me, man. You you've been hitting the ball well. Not like a bunch of my games where my opponents get cheap hits after cheap hits. As you bring in the Cuban missile or roll this Chapman, I don't see why he's pitching for you, man. I heard he's not I heard he was hit with coronavirus. I don't know why you have him in, but it's understandable, you know? Well, unfortunately for you, Julio, this is the uh, signature series Cincinnati Reds or all this Chapman who was extremely healthy, so <laughs> I did I did see the sinker and uh, all the other pitches he had, so I know this is the uh uh, signature series card. This is, I don't know how you got this card, man. This card, you must have gotten lucky in the Ducks on the Pond packs. Ducks on the Pond, baby. Ducks on the Pond. All it took was one pack, and I didn't spend a dollar more on them. It's absolutely insane. And I hang you a slider, and you roll it over. Dude, let me tell you, when to see this video, I timed it good. But, of course, SDS, man. Good timing. Ground outs. You know, you know the saying. We're going to see how good you really are right here, Julio. Oh, hey, I'm try. I, I'm definitely gonna try and put up a fight at least. I'm not just gonna give up straight up. I'm gonna see. I mean, this chairman is nasty though. This chairman is absolutely nasty. It's definitely hard to hit off of as you've thrown two fastballs. But here we go, and you throw another one, and I t- it says good, but I'm apparently a little bit under it, man. That that one should have gone a little bit farther in my opinion, but the fact that it was down the middle. I don't know. As this game comes down to Papa Cap, let's see. Maybe he could try and extend the life of this game. But you know what? The way you're pitching, it doesn't seem like it. But we're not giving up. As you hit him, you, dude, are you jealous? Are you jealous that Papa Cap is better than you? I think that's why you hit him. <laughs> Listen, you know, I had to set it up right here. I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to bring in a righty. But this is going to be the best closer of all time. Ah, uh, yes, Mariano Rivera, the the sinker king is what he's famous for, right? Correct. No, the cutter. The cutter. I, the I know it's the cutter, but just the fact that MLB The Show added a sinker. Uh, I don't recall him throwing a sinker. Maybe he did it during his starting days, but hey, this is a nasty card nonetheless. And we're going to try, like I said, fight towards the end. So here we go. Change up. And we swing early, man. Man, that's absolutely insane. Down to my final strike, and that's gonna be a ball. Nope. Hey, like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop fighting until the end. So here we go, two and two count, and we're gonna hit that so good, perfect, perfect, and that's gonna be over your head. That's definitely gonna make this a seven to four game as we get a run in. Hey, this ain't over. The ball game ain't over till the fat lady sings or till the last out is made. So, uh, hey, I'm not calling it a comeback, but, hey, I'm definitely putting up a fight. Man, this Mariano... Hey, let's make it interesting, right? Well, how, yeah, that's right, man. The viewers want a game, and we're going to give them one. So let's see. Down to my final two strikes. Once again, Chipper Jones now up. As you throw a slider down the middle, and that is gone. It is now a one-run game. 
Wow, man. Just like that, from being down four runs, we're not only down by one. This Mariano Rivera card may not be as good as it seems. As that's going to be hit to third, Chipper Jones makes the play. What an absolute classic. Hey, I honestly fought towards the end, but you were definitely the better player. I'm not going to doubt you on that. You pitched one hell of a game. I definitely thought I had it at first, but you're, you were resilient. You fought hard. What were your thoughts on this game? Hey, Julio, that was a great uh, game, man. Obviously, you know, one-run game doesn't get any more exciting than that. Um, but, you know, I, unfortunately, I did tell you that I was going to have to beat you and that I was going to beat you. So, uh, as promised for the fans right there. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have to eat my words. You were definitely the better player. Hey, Billy, I'm going to be honest, man. We need a rematch. We definitely need a rematch in the future. And if you are down with that, hey, let's make it happen. Of course, man. You know, can't say no to Captain America. That's right. But this time... We, we, we might have to make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe a full nine innings and maybe something a little bit extra on the line. Who knows? But thank you guys Sounds so much. Like plan to me. It is a plan. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow Billy on Instagram. What is your card Instagram account so we can uh, tell the people how to follow you? So if you guys want to learn more about my cards and uh, group breaks and all that, check out at Simply High End Cards. If you're interested in just following me and knowing more about me, at Billy Manzo on Instagram. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was Billy. One heck of a game. He came out on top. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys would like to see the rematch of me versus Billy. And, of course, subscribe to the channel. It is very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.